Hello, this is Mrs. Ward, and I am going to go over practice test one and eight. So number one, so number eight says if a clock turns every hour at the same number of times as the hour. So for example, at 6 a.m. it turns 6 a.m. and once every 15 minutes in increments of flow. So it's 6:15, 6:30, 6:45. What will be the total number of turns to be 15 hours, 5, 10, and 3, and 7, 35? So I thought of it as I have 5, 15, so turn at 5, 15, it's going to turn at 5, 30, it's going to turn at 5, 45, and then it's going to turn at 6, 6 times. It's going to turn at 6, 15, 6, 30, 6, 45, Seven o'clock and it's going to turn seven times. It's going to turn to seven fifteen and then seven thirty. And now I hit my cutoff time at seven thirty five. So that's three times here, three times here, two, and then seven. Six. So that's thirteen, six, eight, and I get a total of twenty one times. Moving on to the next one. When Isaac became Aaron, he weighed much less than he does today. His ring finger has a diameter of 1.2526, while it has a diameter of just 1.8 Assuming his ring is perfectly circular and his finger perfectly, and fits his finger perfectly, by what percentage does Isaac's new ring circumference increase to when he became Aaron? So remember to find the increase, you take the new minus the old, and you divide it by the old. So his, remember, it's the conference, it's equal to pi times the diameter. All these are measured in diameter. So his new diameter is 1.25 pi. His old diameter is 1 pi. So I'm going to take 1.25 pi minus 1 pi, all of divided by the old diameter, which is 1 pi. So I can subtract these because they're like terms that get 0.25 pi divided by a pi. Pi is a simplified number 0.25, and if one's a percentage, which is going to be decimal two places, then you get 25%. So you have a 25% increase. Make sure you do not flip it. If you flipped it and you divided by the new, your correct answer would also be here, but you would be wrong. This is Clary's class, and this is Tellus class, go to use computer lab. There are 20 computers available, two of which do not work, so that means there's 18 computers. Uh, Mrs. Mr. Cleary's class has 14 kids. Mrs. Tellus class has 12, so there's a total of 26 students. If every student must use a computer and there's only two students on a computer, what is the maximum number of students you can have in your team cell? So I'm going to take these 26 kids and I'm going to subtract 18 because that will put one kid at every computer. But when I do that, I have eight, which means eight kids have to double up. So if eight kids have to double up, eight kids have to double, which means that I'm going to take the 18 minus eight, which tells me that I'm going to have up to the most is 10 kids. Uh, Zoe is laying bricks for her patio. The salesman wants to sell Zoe as many bricks as possible to cover her patio with the thickness of one brick. In other words, not exactly the brick on top of the brick. While not having any extra bricks, the patio has a rectangular area of dimensions of 12 by 10 feet, and each individual brick is 4 by 6 by 2. What would the greatest number of bricks the salesman can tell her? All right, so here is my patio. It's 10 feet. 12 feet, but I noticed right off the bat that my bricks are given to me in inches, so I'm going to change these to inches. So I'm going to take the 10, which 12 inches in foot, and this is really going to be 120 inches. Multiply this by 12 to change it to inches, and this is going to be 144 inches. So I am going to take 120 inches and 144 to find out what my total area is. And sorry, I don't know that off the top of my head. So I'm going to take 120 times 144, and I'm going to get 17,280. So I have 780 inches squared. Now the bricks are 4 
inches, by six inches, and then by two inches, side radius, two inches. Now, I'm assuming that the, this salesman is an honest person. Okay. So they're going to want to sell the smallest dimension. And the smallest area that I would have would be the side that's four by two, which would be eight inches. Because that would mean that I would have to sell more bricks. So then I'm going to take the depth width divided by eight. Going back to my calculator, I'm going to divide that by eight. And I'm going to get 2,160 bricks. And that would be the gross bricks that he could sell. Chances are you're going to land with a 4 by 6 showing, but if you have dishonest sales, then you have to wait and do it. A uh, perfect number is defined as a positive integer that is equal to the sum of its distinct proper factors, which are the factors of the number other than the number itself, which the following is not a perfect number. So what that means is 6, I can factor it's 1 times 6, but I'm not going to write 6, 2 and 3. Those are my factors. And when I add those, so 1 plus 2 plus 3, I get 6. So that would be a perfect number. So 28 is 1, 2, 3 will not go in there, 4, 5 will not go in there, 6 will not go in there, 7 will go in there, 8 will not, and then 14. And when I add those, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 7 plus 14, I get 21. I do get 28, so that is a perfect integer. When I do 44, I have 1 times 44, 2 times 22, 3, no, 4, and 11. When I add those, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 11 plus 22, 33, 37, 39, oh, that's 40. That's not equal, so I'm going to just go with 44. I'm, I have no need to check 496 or 2128. It says that, um, Jim is creating a program that will measure the heights of potential riders for the roller coaster. The peak must be between uh, 48 inches and 48 inches. The insulation and 70, or 40, no, must be between 48 inches tall or greater and 70 inches less than here. So these are the people that can ride. ride. Um, she's making a program so that it's the operator standard rider, and if they're not in this proper range, and the by they will not be able to ride the ride. It says, which of the following inequalities will correctly give the full range of heights that are not allowed to go to the roller coaster? And not, not. It's, so you want, so what you're looking for in this inequality is that you're, look, you're looking for these ranges out here. That's what you're looking for. So the first one is the height is greater than 48, less than 78. Nope, those are the people that can actually ride it. The height is less than 48, or the height is less than, so this part is right, the height is less than 48, but the height is less than 78, that's not right. The absolute value of the height minus 63. Well, where did they get the 63? Well, they probably found the midpoint here, so if I put 48 plus 78, I get 126, divide that by 2, and I do get the 63, so that 63 is the midpoint between these two points. And then the distance from here to here is 15. Distance from here to here is 15. So they're saying if I take the height and subtract 63, it's less than or equal to 15. Well, that would put me in here, and those are the people that can ride the ride, so not that one. The height minus 63 is greater than 15. So that puts the, the answer here, people here, and here. And that's what I'm going to want. The height of is less than 78, the height is greater than Again, those are the people that can ride the ride. So the correct answer is J. All right, I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.